Today we're gonna to talk about how the long tail of search is really negatively impacting the existing way that people do keyword research today. I wanna start off with a story, and it's about risk. Picking the wrong keywords is risky. And if most of us use things like search volume, let me tell you what happened when I picked the words SEO company, SEO consultant, and SEO agency to rank for in my own business 10 years ago. Will, did this give you something to brag about in the forums back then? I guess that's cool. Hey, I'm, I'm sorry, this is Kevin. I also work at Sear. Do you wanna see what the website looked like in 2011? Cause it's kind of funny. I got it pulled up. So look, SEO consultant, SEO agency at the bottom here too. SEO consultant, SEO agency. All I'm saying is it's kind of funny what we did back in 2011. That was a long time ago. I'm glad things have changed. Did you know that Adele's Rolling in the Deep was the number one hit back then? I'm just saying, a lot of times passed. Uh, anyway. I spent years trying to rank for those words. And eventually, globally, I was ranked top three for SEO company, SEO consultant, SEO agency. And that got me nothing, zero. No new clients. It gave me something to brag about on forums, which was cool, but it never made me a dime. Why? Because I picked the wrong words. I worked years on working on these keywords only to have it never put money in our pockets. So if I can pick the wrong keywords, a 20 year search vet, 20 years this, this month, 20 years I've been doing search every day of my damn life. Anyway, if I can make those mistakes, I know you can too. I thought I knew how to do keyword research, I was wrong. And if I had had the paid data back then, it would have saved me from a lot of work that bared no fruit. So let me walk you through that today. The other thing before I get there though, that I want to remind you of is the opportunity cost of time. When an SEO picks the wrong keywords, don't end up doing what I did. I spent years trying to optimize these words and building links, finally got the ranking to find it wasn't going to do anything for my business. That was risk. There's opportunity cost. I could have done so much more in that time to truly grow my business. Instead, I did something that I thought was going to grow my business that did not. And paid search data would have instantly qualified that opportunity, but I wasn't doing paid at the time. I think it's very cliche today for people to say, data's the new gold. Yeah, but there's more than just that, right? When I look at PPC data, I get conversions. I get mobile versus desktop. I get so many different things. I can parse out individual pieces of words. Pro tip, the word with changes whatever the word is before the word with like little pieces of words have massive impact and all that data is gold if you know how to mine it and that's why i like to use programming big data tools data engineers etc because you start getting really into big data really quickly when you start parsing up words to understand their meaning so the biggest issue that i see here is zero volume search terms let me show you how this ended up affecting uh, one of my clients and helped me to build a strong strategy. So I, I'm not gonna name names today, but what I did is this visual, as boring as it looks, and I've whited out most of the things so you can't see stuff, um, the keywords that a very popular tool did not have in their keyword corpus or said had zero searches. And what you can see is, I'm not gonna show you the search terms, is when you add up the number of keywords, I'm using the client's paid data. So remember, I've already recorded videos on this. Go watch them. I've, I've connected my client's paid data to their organic data. And I'm able to see that 51,000 keywords are not even in the corpus. So that's a lot of words that I would have probably ignored. But you're probably thinking, well, they're really long tail. Do they really drive the business? Well, my client spent three quarters of a million dollars on those words that aren't in the corpus. And it drove them 3,600 conversions. So now in different businesses, 3,600 conversions mean different things. But what I'm here to tell you today is that these words aren't in those corpuses. These words oftentimes have, have no search volume. So if they are in there, they're going to say, oh, it's really low. It's 10 searches a month. And you're going to say, why would I go after that word? You have to get that whole long tail, bundle it up, look at the number of conversions from paid. And that tells you if maybe ignoring that long tail and only going after those big words with search volume could be a mistake in your industry. The last thing I'll leave you with is a very real client example. We looked for a client and said, show me all the search terms where there's zero volume and how many conversions they got. For that client, it was 740-ish conversions. We then looked at the words that had search volume, it was 333. In most businesses, wouldn't you rather have twice the amount of conversions, money in your pocket, and this is how the savvy SEOs and the savvy content marketers are going to find things that none of their competitors are looking at, 
because they're not pulling rankings for each one of their search terms from paid. They're just going out to a corpus and using that data. Us that use the big data, scoop in, look at all the words that they'll never even know to go after, sort it by conversions and start producing that content. And then we start winning and they don't even know to look for those words in the first place. Then we go after them and battle them on the head keywords. I hope this is a super helpful tip for you all today. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below. We respond to all of them, except for the ones from freaking trolls. Thumbs it up, subscribe. Let's keep doing it. Thanks.